Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice and uh, pretty crazy game that was played in 2018 uh, European Club Cup uh, Championship. Uh, it's a game between Magnus Carlsen uh, on board one with the white pieces for his uh, team uh, Valeranga Shock Club uh, versus German Grandmaster 20 year old uh, Alexander Donchenko. And uh, it's it's a very feisty game, very attacking game, uh, features a very crazy computer line that uh, I'm sure you're, <laughs> you're all gonna enjoy. Uh, so Carlsen uh, won a very nice game, then he drew uh, his previous game against Radoslav Wojtaszek uh, and now he faces uh, uh, yet another Grandmaster, so uh, all in all a very nice preparation for his match against Fabiano Caruana. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's uh, check out a nice um, uh, raw footage video we have uh, from the beginning of this match. Uh, there we have it. Uh, I tried to lower the audio, so hopefully all will be well. There is Carlsen writing down. Uh, Donchenko's name, you know, the dates and everything, and uh, now he will prepare uh, to make his first move. Uh, sorry about that, for some reason the video lagged for a bit. It's interesting, you'll see, uh, he fixes all of the pieces and the pawns, there you have it. And then he starts fixing the pieces all over again before making his first move. And now he goes d4. There you have it, the first move has been made, now let's see how the rest of the game went. Uh, so, d4, like we've just seen in the video. Uh, like we said, uh, all, all the footage uh, and the photos is by Nikki Riga. Uh, all of uh, the links to her social media are in the description below, so feel free to follow us, uh, her to check out some other content. Uh, knight to f6, we have knight to f3 and d5. And here is uh, one of the few occasions where we do not transpose into the Queen's Gambit decline, but rather after d5 we have e3, uh, the call system. Uh, c5, as e3 was played, uh, uh, now c5 attacking uh, attacking the central pawn. Uh, now knight bd2, uh, as the pawn is still on c2, hasn't been pushed to c4, you do, you can't really develop on c3, you have to go knight d2 and only then prepare to push c4. Uh, c captures on d4, we have e captures on d4 and knight to c6 now. Uh, bishop to b5 by Carlsen, uh, pinning the knight and now comes queen to b6. Uh, we have c4. Uh, attacking the center and also defending the bishop. Uh, D captures on c4 and then now a4. This is only move 7 and already we have uh, a position that was never before uh, seen uh, over the board. There, this position is not available in database. Uh, and okay, a6, as knight, there's no real way to stop knight captures on c4. We have knight captures on c4 attacking the queen uh, and queen to c7 now. Uh, bishop captures on c7 uh, on c6. This comes with check. You have to capture. There's no other uh, retreat square for the bishop. Uh, queen captures on c6 and now knight c to e5 with an attack on the queen. Uh, queen to d5 and now white castles. Uh, we have bishop to g4 and uh, here there's there's uh, really no no better move to do than to, than to capture this bishop. Uh, so knight captures, we have knight captures and now comes a5. Uh, so uh, a very nice move, uh, preparing to meet rook to d8 with a rook to a4, so the d4 pawn will be further defended. Uh, knight back to f6, uh, bishop to g5 by Carlsen and now e6, preparing to develop the dark, dark square bishop and perhaps even castle, uh, as you know, it's, it wouldn't be such a bad idea to castle. Uh, knight to e5 by Carlsen, and now comes the bishop to e7, and here we have bishop captures on f6. And uh, here you have to decide whether you want to capture with the bishop or with the pawn. If you play bishop captures, uh, then you will probably face queen to a4 check. Uh, and after queen to b5 defending, queen captures, pawn captures, rook f to c1, and this is uh, perfectly playable for black. Uh, black does have a somewhat uh, weakened pawn structure on the queen side, but he does have a bishop against a knight. The game is on both sides of the board, so all in all, uh, pretty good compensation. Uh, but I think uh, I think Donchenko made a, a correct decision, uh, deciding not to play this against Carlsen, as uh, going into an end game like this uh, against the world champion doesn't matter how good you are, you will you will have a terrible time. Uh, so he decides to go for a different idea. Not bishop captures, but g captures on f6, uh, forcing things to happen. Uh, knight to g4 by Carlsen, and now comes rook to d8. Uh, rook to d8 uh, is is a good move, but also uh, the, it was possible to bring the rook to d8 uh, even by castling. And this perhaps would, wouldn't uh, be, be that bad. The king would be very safe on the queen side. Uh, you can bring it to b8, even to a8, and uh, then you would have uh, the king side all to yourself uh, to be able to attack. 
Uh, but okay, he has a different plan. Rook to d8, uh, pressuring this pawn, and now Carlsen brings the rook to a4, uh, as he did push a5 to be able to do this. Uh, queen to b5, attacking the rook. We have b3 now. The queen, def the queen defends pawn, pawn defends rook. All is well on the queen side. Uh, and now f5, uh, opening up this nice dark square bishop. Carlsen retreats with the knight, knight to e3, and now comes f4. Uh, and okay, knight to c4, and here comes bishop to f6. Uh, bishop to f6 uh, is perhaps a bit slow. Rook to g8 immediately uh, could perhaps uh, could perhaps be a better move. Uh, after rook to g8, uh, uh, immediately pressuring the g2 pawn. Uh, and after knight to e5, uh, queen d5 already are threatening checkmate. And uh, white would uh, definitely feel the pressure here. Uh, but okay, black has a different plan. We have bishop to f6. Uh, and now comes knight to b6 by Carlsen as the... Uh, d4 pawn was attacked twice, so now the rook is also guarding the d4 pawn. Uh, queen to f5, and now comes d5 by Carlsen. Uh, a very nice move that uh, threatens to open up uh, files and uh, start an attack against the king that is still in the center of the board. And uh, this is what I find amazing about this game, that uh, black manages to play a game uh, with his king still being an e8, and, uh, you know, it's it's like uh, it's like uh, watching an, uh, an engine play. Uh, not not being afraid of anything, just you know, cool headed uh, cool headed moves and all is well. I, I don't mind my king being on e8. Uh, we have f3 by Donchenko uh, now threatening to open up the g file, and here we have g3 by Carlsen. Uh, but here, uh, uh, the Norwegian supercomputer Sese had a, a different idea. Uh, so if you want to just for fun, feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to try to find the, the supercomputer's uh, idea in this position. Uh, you know, don't overthink it. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you have just found a move uh, a supercomputer would play. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, instead of Carlsen's g3, uh, the pawn should come all the way to g4. Uh, as you can see, I have a tweet prepared here by Tarje Swenson. Uh, here he says that uh, supercomputer says and now shows that Carlsen can get a huge advantage after the crazy g4. Uh, and later it was shown that it uh, it is uh, even winning. Uh, it's a crazy idea because why would you open your own G file like this? Uh, because now rook to G8 pins the pawn, uh, but now comes uh, another crazy move, king to H1. This is how a supercomputer plays chess. So rook captures, rook captures, queen captures, and rook to G1, attacking the queen now. Uh, queen to F4, and now rook to G8 check. King to E7, and now this wonderful move, D6 check. So you had to find uh, g4, you had to find king to h1, and now even this d6 move all uh, all the way before you even decided to play g4. Uh, this is really insane. Because now, if you capture with the rook, knight c8 check, uh, forks the king and the rook. Uh, and if you play queen captures, again, you get knight to c8 check, uh, forking the queen and the king. And uh, now rook has to capture, and now you play queen captures here. Uh, after king captures, as it is forced, king, uh, rook captures on c8. Uh, and you would have a rook against a bishop. Uh, black would have be up two pawns, but uh, with a uh, slightly worse pawn structure, uh, white would be able to push this uh, definitely for a win. So yeah, uh, it's hard to say if uh, Carlsen considered this. I haven't seen any interviews done uh, with the world champion after this game, but uh, okay, g3 instead of g4, you know. You can't expect anyone to play a, a supercomputer line. Uh, bishop to e5, uh, and then now comes rook to c4 by Carlsen. Uh, and h5, making room for the rook on h6. The rook wants to come to h6 to be able to give uh, even more protection to the e6 pawn, but also you, you want to open up the h file as well. Uh, rook to e1 by Carlsen, and now comes rook to h6, as, as mentioned. Uh, and here Carlsen plays rook to h4. Uh, also, here was uh, another moment uh, where Carlsen could have uh, uh, played a better move. Rook to e3 seems to be... Uh, seems to be a very nice move as it's attacking the f3 pawn. Black uh, cannot really afford to give, give it up. Uh, so after rook to f6, uh, now comes d6. Again, a very nice idea because now bishop captures uh, is met with rook to d4. A double attack against the bishop and after e5, uh, now the rook from f6 is guarding the bishop. Uh, now even comes knight to c4 with a triple attack against this bishop uh, with a double attack against the pawn on e5. Uh, the pawn is pinned, you cannot capture and this will be winning for white. Uh, so after d6, black would have to capture with the rook, but now comes rook to c8 to check. King moves and now queen to c1, but this is, uh, again, uh, a, a very 
uh, hard to find all the way from there because now you're threatening queen to c7 which would uh, lead to the checkmate and if black plays rook to d4 uh, guarding the c7 square uh, now you get the rook captures on f3 queen captures and now comes uh, queen to c5 check uh, you cannot block with the rook because again this would lead to the checkmate after queen captures here uh, so uh, after this check you would have to block with the bishop and then queen captures rook uh, guarding the f2 pawn, uh, guarding the d1 square, so no checks are available here, and uh, white would enjoy a better position here. Uh, if queen captures on b3, black would even lose the game, because now rook to h8, and there is no defense against knight to c8 check, uh, capturing the bishop. If you move the bishop, you get queen to d8, uh, and if you play e5, then you get a very nice move, knight to d5 check, attacking the king and the rook. King moves, now comes rook check on e8, king to f5, and now even g4. Uh, h captures and now knight to e3 and it is over black has to either give up the queen uh, or move the king and then uh, black is getting checkmated after rook to h8 checkmate so a lot of uh, very nice ideas here uh, but okay after rook to h6 uh, rook to h4 was played by carlson he didn't go for this rook to e3 line uh, bishop to c3 and now rook to f4 rook to f4 attacking the queen but also uh, forcing a draw here. Uh, queen to h3 was played and now uh, black is threatening checkmate so you do have to give up the exchange here uh, but Carlsen planned this. Rook captures on f3, bishop captures on uh, e1, queen captures on e1 and now h4. Uh, we have queen to e4 going for this queen to a4 check ideas and here uh, black has to accept it there's really no other move to play. If you play something like d captures on e6 uh, black will even ignore you and simply play h captures on g3. Uh, if e captures on f7, then king to f8, and there's no way to continue the attack. Queen to b4 check will be met with rook to d6, uh, and now, again, nothing to do here. If you try something like knight to d7 check to uh, bring the queen back, uh, and rook to g3, it doesn't help you. Simply king to captures on f7, and <laughs> black is up a whole rook. Uh, so after h4, Carlsen has to go for this queen to e4 idea, uh, going for uh, a4. Uh, but now we have simply h captures on g3, and now there's simply no time. The, the threat is, of course, to capture here. Uh, so Carlsen has to go for a nice check. Queen to a4 check, king to f8, and queen to b4 check. Uh, here, uh, simply moves were repeated, and after king to e8, uh, the players agreed to a draw. So an excellent, uh, well, we might even say victory for for 20-year-old German Grandmaster Alexander Donchenko as he held the world champion to a draw uh, while, you know, uh, starting and ending uh, the game with his king on e8. So very impressive. And it doesn't help you if you try to escape uh, here. Uh, even though rook captures does not win you a queen uh, because uh, rook simply pins rook. So you cannot capture the queen now. And now after queen to e7, attacking the rook on d8, uh, rook to f8, uh, d6 now. White will try to promote his pawn, but it doesn't matter. Uh, queen f5, we have d7, and now queen to b1 check. And now black will simply reposition his queen to guard the queen in square. Uh, king f1, queen check here, and if king tries to escape, then uh, black will be able to position his queen. Queen d1 check, king moves, and now even king to g7 is possible. Uh, as the rook uh, and the queen are guarding the queening square. So after something like captures, of course you cannot capture as the pawn is pinned, captures and captures. Uh, white is up a piece and preparing to, <laughs> to promote his pawn to a queen, but now uh, white will not be able to escape perpetual check here. So uh, both players uh, precisely calculated this after queen to b4 check, king to 8 was played uh, and a nice draw was agreed upon. So yeah, uh, that's the game from round four of the 2018 European Club Cup. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. A very, very feisty game with some very nice supercomputer lines. Um, also, some news. Um, Ding Liren uh, in, in this same round has defeated Peter Svidler. Uh, and with this victory, Ding Liren is now uh, on his 91st game without a defeat. Uh, his last game, uh, the last game Ding Liren lost uh, was somewhere either in November or... Uh, perhaps September last year, but I, I think it's uh, in September last year, in 2017, uh, against Anish Giri. So uh, definitely an impressive feat by Ding Liren. Uh, here I also have a couple of nice photos, uh, also by Nikki Riga. There you have a nice photo of Ding Liren from this round with the, uh, with the white pieces, and here uh, you have a nice photo of Peter Swidler. So if you would like me to show that game as well, uh, you know, just write in the comments, uh, hey, I'd like to see that game as well. 
So yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Anne B. Mitchell, uh, Thomas Ayoloki, uh, Christopher Mayer, uh, Carl Martin, and Evelyn Loka for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon, uh, perhaps with uh, the Ding Swiller game, uh, if you if you if you'll be interested in seeing it, or perhaps uh, with. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, game 15 of the Fisher vs. Spassky series. Also today uh, Carlson faces Shahir Mamedyarov, so perhaps uh, we will see uh, some some more nice <laughs> nice uh, clashes at the top. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.